Greetings to all, and a warm welcome to the concluding lecture of the introductory module dedicated to the structure and bonding in organometallic compounds. Here, our primary focus will be on understanding the relationship between coordination numbers, deconfigurations, and the geometries of transition metal complexes. Before we delve into the examination of the relationship between coordination number and geometry in organometallics, it is helpful to review the definitions of oxidation state and deconfiguration for metals. The oxidation state of a metal in a complex is simply the integer charge that the metal would have on the ionic model. For a neutral complex, this is the number of X-type ligands. For example, ferrocene has two L2X type ligands and so ferrocene is said to contain iron too. For a complex ion, we need also to take account of the net charge. For example, in this positively charged ferrocene analog we have iron 3, and in negatively charged tungsten pinocarbonyl shown here the formal oxidation state of tungsten is minus 2. The deconfiguration follows from the oxidation state and is the number of valence electrons that would be present in the free metal ion that corresponds to the oxidation state. In the positively charged ferrocene analog, for example, the oxidation state is 3, iron is in group 8, iron 0 has 8 electrons, and so iron 3 will have 5 electrons. The positively charged ferrocene analog is therefore a D5 iron 3 complex. Recall that any valence electrons are always assigned to the D orbitals only, not to D, S, and P, as in the configuration for the free atom. This table gives some leading characteristics of specific deconfigurations and shows how oxidation state and deconfiguration are linked. Most organometallic compounds occur in low or intermediate oxidation states, but high oxidation states are now gaining more attention. Back donation is severely reduced in high oxidation states because there are fewer non-bonding D electrons available. Additionally, the increased partial positive charge on the metal in a high oxidation state complex strongly stabilizes the D levels so that any electrons they contain become less available. Even D configurations are much more common than odd ones, particularly for the second and third row. Diamagnetic complexes are easier to study and so are more often reported. An exception exists for metal-metal bonded compounds, where odd electrons on each metal can pair up in the metal-metal bond. For example, you can recall D-manganese decacarbonyl mentioned earlier. Another good example is the recently reported D7 palladium-3 dimer complex, which demonstrates intriguing catalytic activity. The coordination number of a complex having only monodentate ligands is simply the number of ligands present. For instance, in potassium tetrachloroplatinate, the coordination number is 4, while in tungsten hexacarbonyl, the coordination number is 6. The coordination number cannot exceed 9 for the D block because the metal only has 9 valence orbitals and each ligand needs its own orbital. If the coordination number is less than 9, the unused orbitals will then either be metal lone pairs or engaged in backbonding. Many complexes can be discussed in terms of ideal geometries. Ignoring small distortions, each coordination number has one or more such associated geometries. We can predict the geometry of a given complex if we know the coordination number and deconfiguration of the metal in the complex by following the guidelines presented here. This table is constructed basing on the principle that the ligands in the complex attempt to stay as far from each other as possible, and each non-bonding pair of electrons occupies as much space as a metal hydrogen bond. For instance, a complex with a coordination number of 4 and 8 electrons in the D shell of the metal will likely have a square planar geometry. These requirements are fulfilled for Wilkinson's catalyst for which you should expect a square planar geometry. In a catalytic cycle, Wilkinson's catalyst can lose the chloride ligand by dissociation. This will lead to a three-coordinated species still having eight electrons in the D-shell, but here you should expect a change in the geometry of the complex from square planar to a T-shaped structure. Coordination numbers lower than four are found with bulky ligands that cannot bind in greater numbers without prohibitive steric interference. For example, palladium-0 can coordinate only two tritert-butyl phosphine ligands and related three-coordinated complexes do not exist due to unbearable steric hindrance. The F-block metals do not have such electronic limitations and are, again, limited only by sterics, which means that coordination number values up to 15 are reasonable for them. It should be mentioned that the definition of coordination number and geometry is not clear-cut for multidentate organometallic ligands, as in ferrocene. Whether the molecule is 2-coordinate, 6-coordinate, or 10-coordinate is not that obvious. Indeed, there are two ligands, but six electron pairs are involved in metal-ligand bonding, 
and then carbon atoms are all within bonding distance of the metal. The definition most often seen involves counting the number of lone pairs provided by the ligands on the ionic model, making a coordination number of 6 for ferrocene, and we use it in what follows. To reach the maximum coordination number of 9, we need relatively compact ligands. The maximum attainable coordination number is also affected by the deconfiguration. A coordination number of 9 requires that the ligands have all 9 empty S, P, and D orbitals to occupy. So D0 configuration is needed. A good example of a 9-coordinated complex is potassium nonahydridorenate. A coordination requires D2 configuration or lower and similar arguments apply to the other coordination numbers. To visualize the geometry of transition metal complexes, one can use the web-based application called Molecular Shape, developed by the University of Colorado Boulder. This visualization tool is based on the principle that the ligands in the given complex attempt to stay as far from each other as possible, and each non-bonding pair of electrons occupies as much space as a metal hydrogen bond. Despite some drawbacks, this application can be extremely useful for visualizing the shapes of organometallic compounds in three-dimensional space. Opening the application will present you with two windows, where you should select the window labeled Model. This will lead you to a user-friendly interactive interface displaying a linear structure of a complex with two ligands. Please note that in the top right corner of the window, you have the option to choose either a ligand that can bind to your metal via single, double, or triple bonds, or a lone pair of electrons. If we now click on the ligand symbol that can form a single bond with the metal, it will automatically add a ligand to the simplified model of the metal complex in the center of the screen. We want to start our examination with an octahedral complex, which means that we need to add four additional ligands to the starting linear model. We can remove one of the ligands by clicking on the X button in the top right corner. This will automatically transform the octahedral model into a trigonal bipyramidal complex, where the ligands maintain the optimal distance between each other. If we now add a lone pair of electrons to the trigonal bipyramidal complex, it will immediately transform into a square-based pyramid. This structure has a lot in common with the octahedral complex, with the main difference being that one of the ligands in the octahedral complex is now replaced with a lone pair of non-bonding electrons. Sequential removal of two ligands will turn the square-based pyramid into a pyramidal complex where we have three ligands and a non-bonding pair of electrons on the metal. Addition of the second pair of non-bonding electrons will transform the pyramidal complex into a T-shaped geometry, which is again driven by the tendency of the molecule to maintain a maximum distance between the ligands and non-bonding pairs of electrons. Eventually, if we try to add the fourth ligand to the T-shaped complex, the system will generate a square planar geometry which is similar to the octahedral structure. Given that two of the ligands in the octahedral complex are now replaced with non-bonding lone pairs of electrons, please remember that this web-based visualization tool is freely available to everyone, and you can utilize it to visualize the configurations of the complexes you will encounter in this course, as well as for the catalysts involved in your studies. As we saw in Werner's work, octahedral complexes tend to be very geometrically stable, cis ligands stay cis and trans stay trans. The same holds for square planar complexes. Other common geometries tend to be more fluxional, with the ligands permuting their positions within the coordination sphere. For trigonal bipyramidal cases, for example, several isomers can coexist in rapid equilibrium. For instance, the trigonal bipyramidal complex of rhodium presented here has two such forms. In conclusion, we have learned about the relationship between coordination number, deconfiguration, and the geometry of transition metal complexes. We have observed that the geometry of organometallic compounds is influenced by the tendency of ligands and non-bonding lone pairs in the given complex to stay as far from each other as possible. You have been introduced to a web-based application that can be used to visualize and understand the geometry of transition metal complexes. Good luck with your midterm evaluation and the upcoming modules on the use of organometallics in organic synthesis.
Your contributions to this module are greatly appreciated.